Hi, I'm Carl Hinkle, and this video will present the hardware implementation section of the Bricklayer project. My team members are Amiel Fernandez, Brian Bajarski, Kathy Weinhold, Jean Gonzalez, and Brian Burdett. We'd like to give a special thanks to the iRobot company for, for providing the Create 2 mobile development robots, and the background music is provided by bensound.com. The version of our project that I'm presenting in this video consists of a snapper robotic arm from Trossen Robotics mounted atop a Create 2 mobile robotic base. Both the arm and the Create are controlled by Python scripts that we have developed, which are running on a Raspberry Pi 2 Model B. The Raspberry Pi is mounted at the rear of the work surface, which is raised on 50mm standoffs in order to provide access to the power and control buttons on top of the Create. The space also provides a convenient storage area for the USB battery pack that's powering the Pi. The Pi is connected to the serial port on the crate via, U via a USB FTDI cable and uses the Pi serial library to send drive commands to the base. In order to drive the snapper arm servos, the Pi is connected via its GPIO pins using I2C to an Adafruit 16 channel 12 bit PWM servo driver. The Raspberry Pi can't provide the power required to drive servos, so we're using a 10 or G6 volt nickel metal hydride RC battery. The snapper arm itself is a 4 degree of freedom RRRR manipulator with a pincher style end effector that is perfect for picking up and transporting bricks. The joints are driven directly by Robot Geek 180 degree ser robot servos, which have an operating voltage of 6 volts, a stall current of 1600 milliamps, and a standby current of 150 milliamps. The teeth are metal, and overall, the servos seem to be very high quality and powerful for the price. The task that we set out to accomplish, and did accomplish to some degree, was first to reach to the ground in front of the robot to pick up a brick. Once we had the brick firmly in the jaws of the gripper, we would then maneuver the arm into a securely stowed position for travel. Then the robot base would make a 180 degree turn and travel straight ahead to the build location. Upon arrival at the build location, the arm would carefully place the brick in position, ultimately building a wall. Although we came close to achieving our goal, we hit some roadblocks and we simply ran out of time before we were able to get the robot running as well as we'd hoped. It's probably obvious from watching the way the robot is moving, but the most difficult aspect of the motion was simply getting the robot to accurately turn around in a consistent fashion. According to calculations based on the dimension of the Create, rotating the wheels at plus and minus 123 millimeters per second for 3 seconds should have rotated the robot 180 degrees. However, what we found in practice was that 123 millimeters per second resulted in a large undershoot of the, of the desired rotation, and 125 millimeters per second a large overshoot. Using 124 millimeters per second produced just a small undershoot, and that is the value that, that was used in the best results shown in the video. In this run, the rotation is set at 125 millimeters per second. Compare this to the performance of the prior run, where the rotation was 124 millimeters per second. You'll see that very quickly the motion of the robot gets out of hand and I need to jump in and save it before it runs into something. Now we're back at 124 millimeters per second. It's not great, but with some manual correction of the brick locations, we think that it's acceptable as a fulfillment of our stretch goal. However, there are many improvements we would like to make. In the words of our team member Kathy, nothing demonstrates the need for environmental feedback like not having it. The biggest problem we had was with the lack of sensors. The Create's position commands were simply not accurate enough for the kind of precision that we were aiming for. We had hoped to use OpenCV to do visual correction on the positioning of the Create, and in fact we got as far as mounting a camera to the front of the platform. If you look closely you can see the mounting struts. We got OpenCV built and running on the Raspberry Pi, and we also did some basic tests and calibration of the camera using the Aruko library from OpenCV Contrib. 
which is a tag-based system that provides a framework for building augmented reality applications. This approach is very promising, but in the end we simply ran out of time. Although the semester is over, we think this project in the software and hardware that we've built over the last few months has a lot of potential. To that end, I intend to keep working on improving the robot over the course of the summer. One obvious improvement will be to implement the visual course correction that I just discussed. Other improvements will be to enhance the control loop for the snapper arm. I haven't spent much time talking about the arm in this video because its control is very simple at this point. Essentially, the joints are just commanded to move to a position, and then they move linearly to the commanded position. There's much room for improvement here. Other improvements could be made to the user interface of the robot. Since the Create is carrying an onboard Raspberry Pi, it would be interesting to run a web server on the Pi and develop an interactive front end that the users could run from their browser. Currently all interaction is done over SSH, and that's not very user friendly. All of the Python code that we've developed for this project has been released on GitHub, so if you're interested, please head over there and check it out. I'm Carl Hinkle for the RBE 501 Bricklayers Project Team. Thanks everyone for watching.